Greetings everyone, my name is Dom and today I'm going to be showing you guys how to get the best possible quality on YouTube. That is through rendering and uploading and all that shiznit. Today I'm going to be using uh, Adobe Premiere Pro CC 2015. This is the program I use to edit uh, and I do deeply recommend it. There are some ways to get it for free, but it's always best, of course, if you buy it. Now, um, first up, what we're going to want to do is take a look actually at YouTube's guidelines. Now, I'll, I'll leave a link to this page in the description. Um, it will just tell you everything about resolution and the bitrate that you'll want to be choosing. It's all very uh, re relative. No, it's all very relevant in the actual render of it. So make sure you have this bookmark so you can always refer to it again later. But it's always this these numbers here that we want to refer to. Okay, so that bared in mind, let's actually make our project. So go on to sequence, you make a new sequence. Now before when I had my uh, Pentium, I was using this 1080p 60fps preset. If you want to look at the settings, here they are, you can just copy them down. If you have a beefier system and a beefier internet, um, that, like I do, then you might want to go for 1440p or even 4k. However, if you're going to go for 4k, then make sure that your recording is either in 4k or a resolution very close to it, because when you want to upsample something, anything higher, it's like if you're upsampling a 1080p to 4k, it's going to look really bad. The one that I use is 1440p. If you record in 1080p, then again, just copy down these settings here for uh, 1440p. Let's just name our sequence, let's call it render test. Okay. Now let's import some footage. I just recorded this Shadow of Mordor clip. Uh, it's 9 minutes long so we can cut it down a bit. Drag it onto your timeline. You want to do keep existing settings. You'll notice that there's some black bars around the edges. To a lot of this, to a lot of people, uh, this may seem very basic stuff on how to like enlarge and such. But for others, some may not find it as easy or as simple. So let me just enlarge the previews here so I can see what I'm doing a bit better. Just drag it to the edge. Remember, this is 1080p 60fps footage uh, on a 1440p sequence. Once you have yours upscaled uh, so it fits the box pretty much perfectly, then all you want to do is just start your edits. Just edit it all down. Let me just get a, uh, a cool bit. So I'll start it here. And we can have it fade out here. Like so. Now, something, a few tips to just go over for rendering and YouTube in general, motion blur is nothing that you'll ever want to have and neither is frame blending. Uh, so if you're using uh, Sony Vegas Pro 12 or 13, make sure frame blending is off because that really does mess up your footage and also make sure that you are not using fraps because that software really does. Um, use frame blending. The one that I use is DX Tori. Um, it's the highest quality software there is. Uh, Shadow Play is also a good alternative, but DX Tori for um, actual looks. If you want the best looks, then DX Tori is definitely your option here. So you have your clip and it's all edited. You didn't use motion blur in it, and it's it's all nice and dandy. It's all good and looks very nice and it's fun to watch. Um, but the thing is with most renders, whenever you go to render, it loses quite a lot of quality. And earlier I said that you want to refer to this when you went, when you go to render, and that is for a good reason. You see, when you go to render and then you whack up the bitrate to as max as it can go, 
that that's what a lot of people do and that's what a lot of people do wrong you see if you're rendering at 1080p and then you whack it up to 50 megabits per second i think it's megabytes i'm sorry if i get that wrong and you whack it up to 50 me megabytes per second then um it's going to uh it's going to be compressed quite a fair amount because it needs to squeeze it down to a bit rate of 12 megabytes per second and if you have any uh, prior knowledge on what compression does to a video it really makes it look bad so you want there to be minimum compression at all you don't want any compression to take place and so if you render at the max at the max capacity that 1080p can take or 1440p can take if you're rendering at 1440 which we are then you know there's no reason for it to be to for it to be compressed all that much so bitrate will stay the same it doesn't change the bitrate and so yeah let's just uh, hop into the render here now here's where you want to make the changes down here a lot of people will just leave this the same a lot of people will make it different but you want to change this max bit right here to 24 and change target to 24 as well if you're rendering at 1080p 1920 by 1080 then you'll want this to be 12 which is half that but that's not actually doing it you want this to be 12 but seeing as we're doing it in 1440p, we'll go for 4K, uh, 4K? No, 24. You want to turn render at maximum depth on. Make sure all of your stuff here is the same. VBR, one pass. Now, if you look in a lot of armor videos or daisy videos you'll notice that in the distance or in uh, foliage places like for example in this footage it would be here uh, it would be quite grainy and it would just lose a lot of quality and that's because of this one pass you want to do two passes what that does is it will look over the footage um, analyze any bits that it needs to and then it would render that out so it's sort of like looking at it with glasses on <laughs> if that makes any sense um, you just want to use maximum render quality as well. You can use previews if you want, but that's only if you did a pre-render. And if you don't know what that is, then don't tick it. Don't worry about it. Uh, but that's that's generally it. Now, if you wanted the best quality possible, then obviously rendering at 4K would be the best option. Uh, but as I have said before upscaling 1080p footage to 4k would look even worse and so therefore you know the bitrate over the the loss in upscaling quality which it's just not worth it so once you have all these same settings here just hit export this is where you'll want a good pc when you are rendering out in a vbr2 pass it is going to take ages because it's literally rendering it twice and so having a beastie PC definitely helps with this. While it's rendering out, let me show you my actual settings here. So I have an i7 5820K. Uh, it's actually clocked at 4.5 gigahertz. I have 16 gigabytes of RAM and I have a GTX 980 Ti. Okay, so it has now rendered. On our desktop, we have the final results. So let's take a look. There we go. As you can see, this is the final footage, and this is the footage that, you know, the raw footage. And there really isn't that much difference, like, at all. This is sort of conclusive proof that this, this is a very good result. Uh, and with minimal compression happening YouTube side, it really does leave it to be the very best uh, actual quality that can come out of it. If you want to see this actual test now that it is uploaded onto YouTube, I will leave a link to the description for this unlisted video. But anyway guys, thank you so much for watching this video. If you did enjoy it, then do show your appreciation by tapping that like button. I love your face, and I will see you guys in the next one. Terra.